Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Jane and today I'm doing my July top up. So let's say that July wasn't the best reading month. Unfortunately, it was pretty average. Most of the books were okay. There was also some really bad books. So it wasn't really successful. I just got to the state that reading felt like a chore. So I wasn't reading a lot of physical books this month. It happens sometimes. That's okay. I just really, really hope that this isn't a start of a reading slam. But yeah, Yes, I think that let's just start talking about the books. And I'm going to start with the fun part, the stats. Now, I just want to say that currently I'm filming it one day before the month is over. And I have a book that I'm currently reading. And I'm going to finish it tomorrow before the end of the month. So I'm counting it in my stats. Everything except the star rating. But yes, let's start with the stats. So I read 12 books in July, which is a lot if you consider that I wasn't really in a reading mode. But like you can see, most of the books that I read were audiobooks. I listened to seven audiobooks, which is nice. I usually listen to a lot of audiobooks every month. I read only two physical books and I had another physical book that I read in mixed media because I read it also in physical and also in audio. And there was also two graphic novels slash mangas. And in July, I read 4,072 pages, which averaged for 141 pages per day. The shortest book that I read was 112, which was a graphic novel. And the longest book was 495 pages, which is the book that I'm currently reading and my average pages per book is 340 pages which feels right because I feel that most of the audiobooks that I listen to were something around this number of pages. Now age group I read eight young adult books and four adult books which is okay. Usually I read more young adult than adult. It just felt okay this month. I do try to read more adult books. It just wasn't reading a lot so I feel like that's okay. Now I actually found out something really interesting. Out of the 12 books books that I read, 11 of them were new to me authors. And it's really interesting because then I looked at my Goodreads and most of the books that I read this year were from authors that were new to me, which is okay and it's amazing to read new authors. But I do ask myself, maybe I need to go back to authors that I enjoyed from because I do feel like overall 2021 wasn't the best reading year so far. So I'm just asking myself, what can I do to make reading more enjoyable for me? And maybe this is a sign that I need to read more authors that I already know that I really love their writing style. I will try to be more aware of it. And now I read seven standalones in July and five series, which is nice. And I wanted to read more series. It was one of my goals since last month. So I'm pretty happy for it. But actually two of those series are graphic novels, manga series, which is okay. But I do want to read more series, full on long book series. So I will try to improve it next month. But again, I didn't do a lot of physical reading this month and now genres. So last month I had a goal with less romances. Like you can see I read seven romance books this month which is a lot like most of the books that I read but I'm actually really okay with it because last month I didn't really enjoy romances because I wasn't in a romance mood and that's why I wanted to read less romances but actually this month I was really in a romance mood so I was enjoying reading romance. I do happy that I read two thrillers and two horror because those are genres that I'm trying to get more into. They are pretty hit or miss for me, so I'm not always enjoying them, but I'm really glad that I'm trying to read more from those genres. And fantasy. I read only one fantasy book. Okay, technically I read two. Just one of them I consider as romance because it was mostly romance. I actually have two new goals for next month and overall for the rest of the year. First one is to read more fantasy because fantasy was once my favorite genre. Like I remember in high school, I read mostly fantasy it was amazing, so fun, and I feel like I almost didn't read any fantasy in 2021. Like, I read fantasy, but not as much as I was used to. I'm sorry if there is an angle change. And my second goal for next month will be read more variety of genres. It's amazing that I read also romance, thrillers, horror, fantasy. I want to see more variety. Where is the sci-fi? Where is the historical fiction? I want to read more different things, but I feel like this is a good start. So now, star ratings. This is the sad part. Like you can say, two four stars which is really amazing and then I had two three and a half stars which is nice but five reads were three stars really really average and I also had one star read and one one star read which is really bad and sad my average star rating for July is 3.00 like on the dot of course I'm not considering my current read because I didn't give it star rating yet and it just shows how average this reading month was last month I had an average of 3.44 which 
which is a lot better. So yes, I'm not really happy on the average rating. Yes, just July was overall, like I said, pretty average, except the two four stars. I didn't had amazing reads this month, but again, that's okay. Sometimes we have those kind of months. But yes, let's get to my July reads. The first book that I read in July was you Should See Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson. I read it in an audiobook and I gave it three stars. The story was nice. I actually really love the writing and I do get the hype around this book because I can really understand how people connect to this book and connect to the characters. It's basically a high school romance. The main character of the story needs to compete to be the Rome queen so she could get a scholarship. This is also a sapphic romance which is nice and again I really get why people really love this kind of writing and story but overall it felt pretty average to me. It was nice to listen to but I didn't felt real connection to the story and I just think that this is personal preference thing. It was an okay audiobook to pass my time with and this is also a debut which is really nice. I do interested to read Leah Johnson new book. I just see so much potential in her writing and her story but yes overall it was just average. It starts. Now the next book that I read was the best book of July. This is Made in Korea by Sarah Sook. And this isn't only the best read of July. It's probably my favorite high romance of 2021. And this was definitely the highlight of July. And honestly, the book that made this month not so horrible. But I loved this book so much. Basically, this is a YA high school romance. First main character of the story is Valerie. And Valerie runs a beauty business with her cousin. They basically sell a beauty products. And they are really successful until one day, yes, the new boy in school starts to sell also K-beauty products. So yes, basically it's enemies to lovers. It's so amazing. It was made so well. And if you love Korea, K-pop, K-beauty, K-drama, all those Korean stuff, I think you will really enjoy this book. Two main characters are from Korean families, so there is a lot of references and Korean words. But it was just so, so enjoyable. Like really, it's my favorite Y romance of 2021 for a reason. It was just made so well. It felt so genuine. And it really connected. I really love the plot and the characters I just felt an amazing connection to the story and I also read it in an audiobook and the audiobook was amazing. The narrators were really really good. I really recommend the audiobook. It was so enjoyable, so fun. I would definitely recommend this book. I gave it four stars I think but I feel like it's more of a four and a half stars. It was just so so good so yes I feel like four and a half stars is the right rating for this book. So amazing and so enjoyable. Now my next read was my first physical book of the month. I have a lot of mixed opinions about this book. This is House of Hollow by Crystal Chatterland. This is a YA horror, which I find that I really love the genre and I wanted to love this book so, so much. I read it for the summer win and I was planning to read more than one book, but it took me a whole week to read it. Now, that's okay. Sometimes it takes me more time to read some books, but it took me a lot of time to read it, not because I didn't have time, but because it was painfully slow. First of all, I wanted to say positive things about this book because the story itself and the aesthetic were really amazing. Like, the aesthetic was so, so good. I really loved the idea and what the author created from the story. I really loved the whole setting and how everything went. And also the plot itself. I think that the plot was good. My problem with the plot is that as it was so slow, it just got to the point that you already knew everything. Basically, the story following the sisters that disappeared for a month when they were children. And since they got back from this month, a lot of strange things started to happen. Happen. And in the current time of the story, we are following the younger sister and the older sister get disappeared again. So she and the middle sister are trying to search for her. And in the start of the story, I didn't know where it's going to go. I just didn't know anything. I was so intrigued from the story. I really wanted to find out. And I really love the feeling of how everything is such a mystery and you just don't know anything. But because it was so painfully slow and because there was so much clues along the way, when I actually actually got to the end of the story. I just wasn't surprised at all from the plot twist and everything that happened, which is sad because I do think that the plot and the plot twist and everything was really, really good. I just didn't love the execution of how everything went and from how slow it was to the point that everything is so expected. I really wanted to actually be surprised from what is happening. So it was really sad because of it. And I gave this book three stars because of the mixed opinions. On one hand, I really love the aesthetic and the setting. On the other hand, not only that it was painfully slow and took me so much time to read, I think that this book is the reason that I didn't want to read this month. Like, at least it started my mini reading slam in July. It just felt like it 
was really a chore to read it and it was really a disappointment because I really wanted to enjoy this book so much more but yes unfortunately it was another average read and I was really disappointed from this book. My next read was my mixed media read. This is a book that I started to read physically but I wasn't sure what I'm feeling and I tried to switch to the audiobook and it was an amazing decision. I enjoyed the audiobook so much more. And this is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Maas. Yes I finally read Aquatar like this is finally the time. Now I gave it this task. It was pretty average and I know that a lot of people say that the first book is the worst book in the series. It wasn't bad. There was some really enjoyable parts and some really not. But overall it was pretty disappointment from this being mostly romance. I knew that there is going to be a lot of romance but I was expecting more of the fantasy element because this is a fantasy story and I was expecting world building. And I felt like I didn't got almost any world building which was really sad because for someone who didn't read the series before I always saw on social media a lot of people talk about the world of the story and about all the courts in the story and I just was expecting to see more of a world building it made the story less enjoyable to me this is also why the audiobook was really good as there was almost no world building only romance with a little bit of fantasy setting it was really really good on audiobook I really loved the start first 40 pages were amazing I felt so emotional but then the rest of the book was just okay the end was pretty enjoyable like it was fun to listen to but it didn't felt special to me and I actually think that one of my favorite characters so far was Nesta and I know that a lot of people hate her but I really love her character so far. Will I be continuing this series? Probably only because it's good on the audiobook like I will read the rest of the series on the audiobook I just feel like it's more enjoyable. I will give it a chance and I hope to like it and yes it was okay again another average read nothing special pretty disappointing grid. Now my next read was Bile A for Antis which is a new release and I read it in the audiobook and I gave it three and a half stars and it was actually a really nice read. I think that the reason that I enjoyed it a little bit less than I wanted is that I wasn't expecting this sort of story but overall this story is a comedy and this is a romance, thriller, mystery, like there is a lot of genres for this book but the main character of the story she has a lot of aunties. She comes from an Asian family so all of her aunties are really really funny. They are old Asian women. The audiobook was really good with all the accents. The narrator made an amazing job but the main character of the story gets to this situation that she have a body of a dead man in her car and she needs to hide this body or hunt is trying to help her but everything is getting more and more confused and dangerous there is a lot it's a thriller where the main character is the villain but it's a funny thriller if you want to read a really funny book this is a really good one yes it was really enjoyable like I enjoyed it every three and a half stars because it wasn't average but it wasn't as good as four stars and I think because I didn't expect for this kind of story there was also a romance that I actually really really enjoyed from I would recommend this book like this is a really good one I just didn't fully connect to it my next read was One by One by Ruth Weir and this is another book that I listened in an audiobook this is a murder mystery and it was actually nice it took place in a snowy setting and basically there is this company that is called Spoop or Snoop something like this the workers of the company goes this winter retreat in the mountains and the reason that they go to this retreat is because someone wants by the company and those workers are the workers the shares in the company so they need to vote and decide if they want to sell the company or not the story itself is told through two POVs one of the POVs is one of the people with the shares on the company the other POV is the girl that works in the retreat and basically there is a lot of drama around if to sell the company or not so of course there is murders and a lot of things it was actually really nice but again it felt overall pretty average to me it was enjoyable the good thing that I have to say is that I didn't want to stop listening like I always told to myself let's listen to another chapter it was pretty nice and I do really really interested to check more of Ruth Weir stories but overall I didn't felt real connection to the story it was a nice read a nice audiobook to pass my time with but nothing more now we are getting to the two star of the month and this is Better Together by Christine now basically it says that this book is Parent Trap and Freaky Friday and it is but in a really bad way. Now I actually gave in the start one and a half star to the book but I actually hired it up to two stars because the book was really bad. It was really trashy. It wasn't written in a good way. It was really immature. Just overall most of the story wasn't made in a good way and basically it following two sisters that were separated because their parents got divorced and the little sister doesn't know about the bigger sister 
sister and they meet each other on a summer camp and from there there is a parent trap plot with them switching between each other but then there is the freaky Friday and suddenly there is a magical realism and they actually change bodies it was so messy and so unrealistic I really wish that there wasn't the freaky Friday thing because it just felt so not connected to the story and it could get the same result also only with the parent trap plot but yes it doesn't felt like the parent trap in any way I really didn't like the older sister the thing that I have to say about this story is that the two POVs actually really felt different from each other which was nice really so the difference in the personality between the two sisters but except it most of the book was written really not in a good way it felt to me like I'm reading a book that was published in the internet without any editor looking at the book but it isn't one star because some parts in the book was enjoyable I kept listening to the book it wasn't as bad I actually really really liked the romance plot of the younger sister it was a sapphic plot the romance plot of the older sister and overall her plot wasn't really interesting and yes for stars it's really not the parent trap vibes if you want to read a book with the parent trap vibes read You Have a Match by Emma Lord it's an amazing book that gives the most parent trap vibes that I ever read about the next read was the graphic novel that I read and this is Fence Volume 1 by C.S. Fassett and I gave it four stars it was really enjoyable it's actually a graphic novel that I wanted to read for a lot of time and I read it for the Olympics on for the sport drop and I expected to like it. I didn't expect to really connect to it as much as I connected to it. It was really really fun. My only complaint is that it felt too short but it's a graphic novel like it's understandable. There is more volumes to the story like I will definitely read the rest of the volumes. And yes it's basically following fancy in school. There is enemies to lovers. This is a main male romance. I really really enjoyed the romance so far. I saw only the enemies part so far but it was really fun enemies. But yes I really enjoyed those enemies to lovers and overall the whole book I also really love the illustration style and yes it was really enjoyable I really really want to read the rest of the series as soon as possible and then my next is the one star of the month and this is the final girl support group by Grady Hendrix I'm so sad about it I'm so so sad about it because I really wanted to enjoy this book this is a, basically a horror thriller and the plot of the story sounds amazing as you know when in horror movies there is the final girl when everyone is dead only one girl keeps standing and usually she is the one who kills the killer so this story is following the group of the final girls and it's basically when they are older and after everyone already forgot about them being final girls and we are following one of the final girls and in the story there is someone targets their group and trying and them for good and yes it's basically a really good book if you're a slasher movies fan and I'm actually not I can't watch slasher movies I really hate those kind of movies that are really out of my comfort zone and I know that it has the vibes of a slasher movie but I didn't expect that it will feel like this because I personally really don't love horror movies in general but I really love horror books so I just thought to myself yeah it's okay like I don't love slasher movies but the book feels different but something in the book just felt so painful to me and I'm really mad on myself that I didn't DNF this book and I really don't know why I didn't DNF this book because it's also took me so much time to read it it took me almost a week it was an audiobook it also was pretty long I just had so many chances to DNF it I still didn't DNF it I just think that I was interested to see how I feel from this kind of story it was just really out of my comfort zone and also overall I really didn't love the main character like her personality and everything the plot itself felt more like a thriller and not like a horror I really didn't love the plot it just felt not right for me and not the book for me it's really sad like I wasn't expecting to give it one star one star is really bad so yes it was really sad the worst book of july and yes gladly it's over the next read was i hear the sunspot by yuki fomino this is a manga and this is first book in five book series i think this is actually a book that i wanted to read for a lot of time it's a main male romance and one of the boys in the story has a hearing disability a hearing loss the representation was really good this is one of the things that i enjoyed the most in this manga and I gave it three stars like it was cute and okay it wasn't bad it was another disappointment read because I really really thought that I'm going to love it way more than three stars in my head it was definitely at least four stars I feel like overall the story felt young and a little bit on a surface level it was really cute and there was some really really emotional parts and parts that were so amazing but it wasn't really 
really, really deep. I'm sorry for the angle change again, but yes, it just felt not really deep. I really wanted to see more, more of the characters, of the story. But yes, overall, it was pretty nice. Just wasn't what I was expecting. It was a cute short read in next read. It was the last audiobook that I listened to this month. This is the Kiss Quan Chen, and I gave it three and a half stars. It was actually really, really cute. The main character of the story has autism, and basically, her parents want her to start dating, to find someone for herself. And because of disability, she has a hard time with social situations, and she's hiring an escort to teach her how to be in a relationship. And basically, he teaches her everything, but of course, they are falling in love. And it's a really, really cute story. And the thing that I love the most is that you see how healthy relationships supposed to be. The guy in the story, Michael, was so sweet and so caring. The relationship was so good, like you really felt the chemistry between them. I really love how the story progressed and the plot and the characters, like everything was really, really good. And the start was pretty average, like I wasn't sure what to think about. But as the story progressed, I just got more and more into the story. It was a really steamy book. It was actually really fun, really enjoyable. Everything just felt really genuine. And yes, in a health stars. And my last read, which is the book that I'm currently reading, is Reaper at the Gates by Saba Taylor, which is the fourth book in the Amber in the Asha series. I'm reading it for our Amber in the Asha long. Next month in August will be our final month, which is really exciting. And yes, I don't have a lot to say about this book because I'm currently reading it. A live show on the book in two days. I will definitely finish the book because I need to finish it for the live show. And yes, if you want to hear my thoughts, you can join our live show. The phone till this video is uploaded, the live show already ended. But yes, a really fun series. Hopefully I will love this book, the fourth book, because I didn't really love the second book. But yes, this is my final read, the 12th book of July. So overall, like you saw, my reading this month was pretty average. I had a few enjoyable reads, but also some of the enjoyable reads were disappointment because I expected more and I wanted more. Overall, it was really, really average. I really, really hope that August will be much better. I really hope to be in a reading mood and I really hope to enjoy the books that I read in August, not like in July. But yes, at least I read Made in Korea, which was amazing. Please tell me what is your favorite read of July? What is the book that you enjoyed the most in this month? I hope that you at least had a good reading month, but if not, let's hope that next month will be better. The next video is finally the recommendation video that was supposed to be uploaded a week ago. I'm really excited for it, but until this video, you can check more videos by me. Thank you so, so much for watching this video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye, everyone!